All right, so we'll finish up um, section 9.2, which is a little bit more on polar graphs uh, and actually typing them in on the calculator. Okay, so we'll look at some, some different kind of shapes you can get. So remember that a point in polar is r comma theta. You need a radius and you need an angle. Now, first example, um, this is from page 488. I just want to try to graph the equation r equals 2. r equals 2. So let's think of a point that would be on that graph. They're telling me r equals 2. They don't tell me what theta is. So that means theta can be anything you want. So could somebody give me a point that has a radius of 2 and the angle is anything you want? Let's keep the angle between 0 and 360. It'll give me like 5,000 degrees or something. 2 and 30? Yep, 230. Let me graph that point. 230 would be 2, I don't know, 30 degrees, right about there. Okay. Somebody give me another point. Yep. 2, 0. 2, 0. All right. So 2, 0, you're right about there. All right, let's do um, another one. Yeah. 2, 315. 2, 315. All right, so that's 2, let's see, 270 is um, 3 quarters of the way, and then 315 is right there. All right, so we could, we could keep going. You can name thousands of points. If you graph every single point <coughs> with a radius of 2 and an angle of anything you want, what, what shape would you end up creating? A circle. Right? If you graph every single point with a radius of 2, all your points are going to be on that circle right there. And that's what the picture of r equals 2 looks like. Right? And we can graph that very easily on the calculator. If you go to mode, um, go to polar. This is like the best thing you can do in polar. Circles are the simplest thing. You put in a single number, r equals 2. And make sure you hit zoom square if you don't want it to look um, like an oval. Okay. Zoom square. Uh, let's see. R equals 2. Let me check my window. Um, all right. It might have drawn it, but it's just... It looks like there's a very tiny blue dot. So let's see what's going on. Um, oh. The reason it didn't draw it is because you have to let the angle, the min and the max, go from 0 to 360. If you only go from 0 to 6 degrees, you're only going to get points from here to here. You're going to get a very small section. Okay? If I let it go to 90, now I would get, well, it's drawing it super slow. You can kind of see it, but I'm, I'm going to speed it up. Let's go, yes, 0 to 90 now gives me a quarter of the circle. What does that number have to be to go all the way around? 360. 360. So set it to 360. And there you go. It drew kind of slow. I probably could have sped that up a little bit. Um, but just like your... Um, your T min, T max, T step, you have theta min, theta max, theta step. What's going to happen if I make this like 10? What's going to happen to my circle? Yeah, it's not going to look, especially if I zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can even kind of tell without me zooming in. Well, that actually doesn't look too bad, right? But eventually, if you get to a point where you let theta step, theta step be big enough. Now it's starting to show the points it plotted. That's really not what you're looking for. Okay. So just keep, you know, just try to think of a reasonable number. You're counting from zero to 360. Is it reasonable to count by fives? Yeah, that's that's not going to take that long. Set it to fives. It's going to plot a point every five degrees. So, what's 36, 360 divided by 5? 72, I think. So, you're going to get 72 points to draw the circle. That's pretty good. Okay. 
Any questions on no? Okay, let's look at this one. This one is kind of the opposite. This is theta equals two. You can't graph this on the calculator. There's no option that says theta equals, and then you can type in a number. Just like when we do the y equals, that's what it says. It says y equals. It doesn't say x equals. So there's no option for x equals when you do functions. There's no option for theta equals when you do polar. So let's just name some points. R can be anything you want, but theta has to be 2. Right? And if you want to know roughly what, that's 2 radians. Um, in degrees, that's about, uh, let's just see, I'm just multiplying by 180 and dividing by pi. It's about 100, let's just call it 115 degrees. So what's a point that would be on that graph? R can be anything you want, but theta has to be 2. Yeah? 1, 2. One, two. Yep. Okay. Let me graph that. Remember, 2 is 115 degrees. So I'm going to go 1, and then 115 degrees, uh, a little bit past 90. Okay. What's um, another point that would be on that graph? Four, two. Yep, you could do 4, 2. 4, 2. Write 4, and go 115 degrees. All right. um, someone else give me another point. Well, Alec? 3, 2. 3, 2. Okay. So that one's going to be about right here. Another point? Yeah. Negative one, two. That's what I was looking for, one with a negative. Negative one, two. So we can kind of see the pattern of what's happening with the first three. Let's look at what happens with this one. <coughs> negative one, and then 115 degrees counterclockwise. What, what's it look like is happening here? What do, you, what do you think you would get if you keep doing more and more points? Yeah, you're going to get a straight line that goes where? Specifically, Okay, it's at 115 degrees, but it's going to go right through the origin. the origin. Yep. Now, I might not have lined my points up perfect, because I was just kind of estimating it. Um, but it's going to basically be, well, it's kind of close. Oh, about like that. So when you graph theta equals, you're going to get a line that goes right through the origin. Can you get other kinds of lines in polar? Yes, but it's very complicated. So we're not going to get into it. Yeah. Are you going to be looking for the spin factor? I am not going to be looking for a spin factor on that. There is no spin factor you have to worry about. All right. Yes. Um, okay, any question on that? Okay, so we got a line. That kind of line is pretty simple. Okay. All right, so... The one other graph we're going to do by hand, and this is the only kind of complicated one, um, has kind of a special shape to it and a special name. But um, I think once we draw it, if we do a good job, it'll look like something, and you'll, you'll see what the name is once you see what it looks like. So first thing is, this is going to be a shape where the radius is changing. Okay? But it's not going to be like a spiral where the radius just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The radius is going to get bigger for a certain amount of time, and then it's going to get smaller again. So this kind of shape is going to connect to where it starts. So it's going to form a closed shape, where a spiral is like an open shape. Okay? This will connect to itself. All right, so that's what I want to graph. R equals 3 plus 3 sine theta. Okay, and to graph it, what we're going to try to do is we're going to make a table of values. Okay, that's what's going to help us to graph this by hand. Now, look at that r equals, and then look at the, look at the formula in the box. Is that thing that I just circled ever going to change? No, it's always going to be what? 
It's always going to be three. How about this? Can that ever change? That thing I circled. No, it's a number, right? It can, I can never change. How about this? That can change. It can change, but only to a certain extent, right? It can't, can't be a million. When you take the sign of an angle, it's always between these two numbers. Um, so that's what you can plug in. What would you get for an answer if you did that? One and negative one. One and negative one, right? So the only thing here that can change is this. It can be between one and negative one. So knowing that, we can figure out kind of what's the biggest the radius could ever be, what's the smallest it could ever be. And that's, that's what we're going to try to go through. So as, um, as Harris said, the, the angle goes between 0 and 360. But when you plug in that angle and then press the sign button, the answer will be between negative 1 and 1. But then that answer is tripled. And then you're adding 3 to it. So we gotta, we'll look at that. So let's think of the smallest the radius could ever be. That would happen if this came out to negative 1. What's negative 1 times 3? Plus 3. Zero. zero. So the smallest that this radius will ever be is 0. That means this picture is going to go through the origin. That's what happens when you have a radius of 0. Remember, that's that spin factor. Um, now, when sine of theta gets to its highest value, it hits 1. What's 1 times 3? Three? 3. Plus 3? Three. 6. Six. So this picture can never be more than six units away from the origin. That's, that's kind of where we're at. It's going to be between zero and six units. Okay. So this is the graph of sine. Since it's the only thing that can ever change in this problem, that's what I'm focusing on. I'm showing you, can I break it into four sections? That's the going up part. Then we've got the going down part, but still above the x-axis. Still going down, but now below the x-axis. And then going back up. Okay, so we kind of think of that in, in four parts. The red part is from 0 to 90. The green part is 90 to 180. The blue, 180 to 270. And the black, 270 to 360. Any question on that picture? And there's a lot of symmetry here. Like if you kind of put a vertical line right there, the red and the green part are symmetrical. So the graph goes up exactly the same way it comes back down. Because red and green, there's symmetry. Right? Same thing here. In the blue part, it goes down. In the black part, it goes up. And it does it at exactly the same rate. Because okay? there's symmetry between the blue and the black. There's okay, so lots of symmetry here, which means our graph is going to have some symmetry when we sketch it. All right, so I've set up a table. In the table, I have a row for each section. You want to see it color-coded? That's the red. That's going to be green. Um, what else? Then blue. And the last section, that's what's happening in black. So first thing I'm going to look at is just what's happening to the sign. Then I'll look at what's happening to R. Okay, so let's, let's just start with the sign. So between 0 and pi over 2, that's the red section. So look at the red section of that graph. What's the lowest value that the red curve goes? And what's the highest value? From what to what? Yeah. So in the, in the red section, sine is going from 0 to 1. What's happening in the green section? Sine is going from what to what? One to, zero. 1 to 0. And there's going to be some symmetry there. It went 0 to 1, now 1 to 0. Um, what's happening to sine in the blue section? Zero to negative one. Yep. And what's happening to sine in the black section? 
negative 1 to 0. Okay, so now we know what's happening to sine. Now we can look at what's happening to r. Sine starts at 0 and ends at 1. So we're going to plug each one of these numbers in for sine. So let's replace, it's like what's in parentheses there, you're going to replace that with 0. What's 0 times 3? Zero. 0. Plus 3? Three? 3. R equals 3. So when the sine is 0, R is 3. Now let's see what happens at the end when sine gets all the way up to 1. So what's in parentheses here? Block it out, that would be a 1. 1 times 3? Plus three. So this is a section where the radius is growing. It's growing from three up to six. Okay, let me, um, I'll sketch that. We'll sketch it as we go. So let's label our graph. You don't really need polar graph paper. This, this will work okay. But if you want polar, you can, you can use it. So when our angle is 0, the radius is 3. That's like graphing this point. When the angle is 0, the radius is 3. Okay? What about at the end of that? What about when the angle is 90? Well, when the angle is 90, the radius is 6. Okay? At the end of the section, the sine of 90 is 1, and we did the arithmetic, you get a radius of 6. So that's like graphing 6, 90, or 6 pi over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the radius is growing the whole time. So kinda, I'll try to show it the best I can. But what's going to happen is as you rotate, you go further away from the origin. Almost like a spiral, but not, not quite. So don't draw this part yet. Just watch it. So you start like that, and you get a little longer, a little longer, longer, and it gets longer and longer as you rotate until you end up right there. So it's, it's growing. So it's going to kind of look like this. Maybe just move these out of the way. That's the first part. So it starts at 3, and it grows to 6. Now it's going to be just the opposite in the next section. If 0 to 1 gave us this, 1 to 0 is reversed. It's going to go 6 to 3. So it's going to look exactly like I just drew, but it's going to be a mirror image. So when you're at pi over 2, your radius is 1. Yep, I got that right here. When you get all the way to pi, which is halfway around, your radius is going to go back to 3. So halfway around, your radius is at 3. So you're going to end up right there. So actually, I could just take this, make a copy of it, and flip it. And we'll see how good this looks. That's OK. Sketching polar stuff by hand is kind of hard. So just do the best you can. All right. Now, next section. Blue and black, they're going to be symmetrical. 1 is 0 to negative 1, 1 is negative 1 to 0. They're just the opposites. So once we figure out one of them, we'll know the other one. Let's start with when sine is 0. So replace all this with a 0. And what do you get? 0 times 3? Zero. 0 plus 3. three. So the radius starts at 3. Okay, you can put that point right here. Starts at 3. And now, replace all of this with where we're going to end, negative 1. What's 3 times negative 1? Three. Plus 3? Three? Zero. 0. So this is kind of spiraling in towards the origin. Okay, When your radius is 0, you're right at the origin. So again, just I'm going to draw some lines. Just watch it. Don't, don't draw this part. It starts here, and as it rotates, it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter until it spirals in. So each line gets shorter as you rotate. Right, so kind of like that. All right. And now the last section, 
This was 0 to negative 1. This is negative 1 to 0. It's just the reverse. So the radius is going to grow from 0 back to 3. So it's almost like it's spiraling back out again. Okay. So just take this, make a copy of it, and it's like a mirror image, which kind of looks the same. So that's pretty much what the shape kind of looks like. And if I did a somewhat decent job, you might be able to recognize that it kind of looks like uh, a bell. Yeah. <laughs> no, not bell. Does it look kind of like anything else? Um, what if I just turn it so you can see it differently? But if you did it, did... Oh, flower. Um, we are going to look at flowers today, but no, it's not really a flower. <laughs> You're horrible at Pictionary. I, I know. <laughs> Does anyone think it looks like anything else? Like a part of your body? Like a... Like a... No, it's a... No? It's in your chest. Yeah, it looks more like a tongue than a heart. Heart, yeah. It's supposed to kind of. Are you sure? Yeah. I know it doesn't go. Maybe it should go in, like more. No. And the heart is more pointed. It's a little bit round, but it, I mean, it looks kind of like a heart, a little. If you square. And. Because that has an uncanny resemblance to a heart, they call that shape a cardioid. Now, sometimes it looks more like a heart, less like a heart, it depends on how much it goes in or how rounded it is. A lot of times the bottom of the cardioid comes out pretty round, so it really doesn't look as much like a heart. Hearts are more pointed usually. But, uh, anyway, that shape is called a cardioid due to its uncanny heart like shape. So, Oh, Cardioids basically have this format. Okay, if I go back to mine, 3 plus 3 sine. Well, if you had A plus A sine, A can be any number, that's a cardioid. Except A can't be 0, because if A is 0, then you wipe out everything. Now, the only difference between sine and cosine um, well, I'll graph them and I'll show you. They're both cardioids, but it's the way it is kind of positioned. So let's graph the one that we just did. 3 plus 3. Did we do sine? Yeah, we did sine. Sine theta. Now, before you hit graph, a couple things you want to check. We know the radius is from 0 to 6. Make sure your window covers that. Does my mins and maxes here cover everything 0 to 6? No. No. So what I'm going to do is go negative 6 to 6. Negative 6 to 6. Probably bigger than I need, but that's OK. Now, we're in degrees. How many degrees do you have to go through to go through the entire sine function? You've got to go through all 360. Now, we're going to count by fives. So we're going to graph a point at 0, 5, 10, 15. That should be enough points. Okay, so it's kind of, it's not as pointy as a heart. It's a little more kind of squished, but it has like that part that comes in. Maybe that's what they're looking at. Um, so there's, there's your um, cardioid. Now, watch what happens if you change sine to cosine. All that happens if you change sine to cosine is it turns it. That one looks more like that. <laughs> That's actually the same picture, exactly. It's stretched out. It does look a little more stretched out, yeah. But it is the exact same picture turned 90 degrees. It looks a little more stretched out because of the, we've talked about it, the screen is rectangular. Um, now, if you start to make the numbers different, like a 3 and a 5, that's not a cardioid anymore. What happens is it starts to loop in on itself. So you get something like that. 
and it goes off the screen. But um, that's not a cardioid. It's kind of like a cardioid, but you've got to have the two numbers the same to be a cardioid. Um, I think if you make the other number bigger instead, um, it starts to decrease the indentation of the heart. So it starts to look smoother, I think. Yeah, so you can kind of see it like it, it wants to dip in a little bit, but it, it doesn't quite do it. All right. So I've got to keep them the same, but anything of that form, it's called a cardioid. Any question on that? So that's one shape you can draw in polar that you can't really draw um, rectangular very easy. Um, theta only has to go from 0 to 2 pi, or we did it in degrees, 0 to 360. So it, it, you got to kind of play with it before the test, because even I sometimes, I hit graph, and I don't get anything on the screen. So then you got to start kind of investigating, like, what's going on? Did, did I set my window wrong? Did I type in the graph wrong? Usually it's a problem in the window, right? So let's say you were doing some problems in radians, right? And let's make this a little bigger so it doesn't go off the screen. You're doing some problems in radians and you just switch to degrees. Well, in radians, you're going to use the number 2 pi a lot. So let's say you leave 2 pi in there and you hit graph. And you look at it and you're like, what's going on? How come I'm not seeing the whole thing? Because it's only going to 6 degrees. It's only going to 6 degrees. Now, if I change, my, change this to radians, that should be perfect for radians. 6.28 is exactly what you want. Okay. Uh, maybe not. It's not. That doesn't look right either. What's wrong there? You might, you might get that on the test. You've got to figure out what's wrong. There's one number that's very, very messed up. <coughs> it's the step, right? I'm counting from 0 to 6, and I'm putting a point every 5 units. That's not many points. You're going to get one at 0. You're going to get one at 5. And that's it. So this is going to try to sketch two points to draw the whole graph. If you want to get points more often, uh, let's go by tenths. That's pretty good. I mean, you're counting from 0 to 6 by point ones. So you're going to get a lot more points. And now you get exactly the same picture we had before. Doesn't quite connect because my theta step is not small enough. Maybe I should have gone like 0.05 instead of 0.1. And then it would look like it connects. So just you gotta play with the window sometimes. All right, so we're gonna take the cardioid equation we just had, and we're gonna change it into x's and y's. Now, you're not gonna be able to graph it. All you're gonna be able to do is change it to x's and y's. To graph it, you would have to get y by itself. You're not gonna be able to get y by itself. Okay, so if you really wanna graph a cardioid, Polar is the way to do it. But if you want to write it in rectangular, we can. It's just useless. So we'll write it just to learn how to convert, but don't worry about graphing it. So there's four formulas we've learned that allow you to take something that has r's and thetas and get rid of them. Right. So remember, polar, you're going to have r's and thetas. Rectangular, Think of a square grid, x's and y's. Everywhere you see an r or a theta in a formula, you've got to get rid of it. You're allowed to use any of these formulas to get rid of it. Most of the time, we just use the first three. We don't really use this one too much when we're converting. Okay, so we've got a formula that relates x to r's and thetas. We've got a formula that relates y to r's and thetas. And another formula that relates x's and y's to r's. No thetas in, in the third one. Okay, so we're going to take the cardioid we just had, and we're going to change it to rectangular. All right. What... Let's just underline, what do we have to get rid of there? If we want to write this in rectangular, what can't be there? Um, that can't be there. And what else? Theta. And what, el what else is, with, what's the theta with? Sign. It's with sine. So we got to get rid of those two things. I would start with sine. 
Okay, whenever I have a choice, I always get rid of the trig function first. So, is there anything that we can plug in to get rid of sine? Or is there any formula, if we call these one. formulas, one, two, three, four. Formula two. Formula two. This part has something to do with formula two. If you took formula two and wanted to plug in for sine, what would formula two tell you sine equals? Y divided by R. It's y divided by r, yes. So formula two says if you take y and divide by r, you would get the sine. Any question on that? Now, let's plug that, let's do that. Um, what was it? Y divided by R. So now we got another R in there, but it's actually better to get rid of the sign. Okay? R's are going to be easy to get rid of. The sign, that one, we, we want to take care of that right away. All right, now. When I have a problem with fractions, I don't like to have fractions in it. Fractions usually make things more complicated. So what could we multiply everything by to get rid of this fraction? R. R. So we're going to multiply everything by R. We're going to get R squared, which is fine. We can, we can deal with that. We're going to get 3R plus 3Y. So this part is good. There's nothing else you need to change there. You're allowed to have a y. You're not allowed to have an r squared. So, what can you change r squared to? I squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared. You're allowed to have x's, and you're allowed to have y's. So that part is fine. The only part we've got left that you don't want to have is r. Well, let's go back up. If r squared is x squared plus y squared, then what would r be? What could you do on each side? The square root of x squared plus y squared, which is not x plus y. You can't, uh, you can't take the square root of two terms individually. That's all you can do. All right. So if r squared is this, then r is the square root. Once we plug that in, that's it. That's all we can really do. That's, that's the end of the problem. Square root of x squared plus y squared. So that is the equation of a cardioid written with x's and y's. I don't like that. Yeah, it's much more complicated looking. That's why if you want to graph a cardioid, polar is much, much simpler. Okay? And you can't type that in on a calculator. I mean, maybe we could type in pieces at a time. Like you could do part of the cardioid, and then another part, and another part, and then another part. But there's no way to get y by itself in that formula. There's too many y's everywhere. Okay. But any questions on what we did? We got rid of the sine, got rid of the fraction, and then got rid of the r squared and the r. So that's converting from um, polar to rectangular. Okay? So let's just kind of write down what we've done. We've done polar to rectangular. We just did that. On Monday, we did parametric to rectangular and back. We did both. Right? Taking parametric and making it rectangular, that was called eliminating the parameter, okay, getting rid of the t. So we did that. And then I showed you kind of like a cheap way to take something and make it parametric. That's when you let x equal t and just change your x's to t's in the y equation. So we've done, we've done both of those. Now we're going to look at polar to parametric. I'm going to show you how you can take something that's written in polar and change it to parametric. We haven't, um, haven't done that yet.
All right. So when you write something in parametric, how many equations does it involve? Two. One for x, one for y. All right. So let's, let's pretend that we had some kind of fancy graph in polar. Okay. It could be a cardioid. could be a blob. So there's our fancy graph in polar. I'm going to focus on one point. That dot right there. Okay. If I want to figure out that in parametric, polar is going to give me this. What's that called? That's my radius. So polar will tell you the distance from the origin to the point. Polar gives me a diagonal. In parametric, I don't want a diagonal. I want to know an x, and I want to know a y. That's what I want to do. So what I have to do is take that diagonal that I'm given and kind of break it into the green and the red part. Okay, break it into a horizontal and a vertical instead. So it's like if I wanted to walk to somebody's seat, instead of just saying, okay, just walk on a diagonal 10 feet that way, I want you to say, okay, I want you to walk six feet straight and then turn and go eight feet that way. So I want to just walk straight instead of on a diagonal. So it's just a different way to get to the same spot. All right. Now this angle, you would know. Okay, they, they, they tell you that in polar. So let's think how we would get the horizontal part. What position is, um, is that side? It's adjacent. And what position is that? Hypotenuse. What trig function does that? Cosine. Cosine theta equals x over r. Move the r to the other side, and you get r cosine theta equals x. Any guess on what the y is going to be? R sine theta. Yep, r sine theta. Now, the only difference is this number right here, let's look at my picture. Does it stay the same or does it change? Think about measuring R here. Now think about measuring it to there. Now to here. Is R staying the same? No, no R is changing all the time. How do you know what it's going to be? They'll give you a formula. They'll tell you the formula for that shape. So a formula. is going to go in right there in place of r. If r was a circle, you could just put a number. But it's not a circle. So they'll tell you what the formula is for there, and it's going to be the same formula right there. All right, so let's go back and, and look at it. So here's a formula. r equals some function, and it'll have theta. Maybe it's cosine 2 theta, sine 5 theta, whatever it is. They'll give you a formula. If you want to know the x value, okay, you take the formula that they give you and multiply it by cosine. Okay? Remember, that's your radius out in front. But your radius is going to equal some formula. So you're going to put your formula right there, multiply by cosine. If you want the y value, you're going to take, remember, this is your radius but they're going to give you a formula for it. Take your formula and multiply by the sine. So formula they give you times cosine, formula they give you times sine. And that's how you write it in parametric. So there isn't really much to do. You just have to write down the formula that they already give you and put a cosine or a sine next to it. Make sure cosine is with the x, sine is with the y. Now. Look at the original formula. What letter did it use? Yeah. Theta. Because it was in polar. When you write it in parametric, what letter do you use? T. t. So that's the other thing you have to remember. Change everything to T's. Okay? I mean, if you leave it as theta, it's not a big deal. But really, we, we shouldn't. When we rewrite it in parametric, just put in T's instead. That's what they use. 
Okay, so we'll um, let's look at a, an example. Okay, so I'm not going to give you a, a random shape like that. I'm going to give you an actual formula. Here's your formula. What does that look like when you graph it? Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. But that's maybe it's a blob. Okay, but that's that's the shape. That's the formula for your blob. Okay, so remember, in parametric, we have an x and we have a y. Now, r is r a horizontal distance, a vertical distance, or a diagonal? It could be all, but when we write it as parametric, do you want a diagonal? Yes. No. Think about x and y axis. Do they go diagonal? No. You don't want diagonals. So how are you going to avoid diagonals? You're going to think of it as a triangle. Take the formula times the cosine. Take the formula times the sine. Okay. So my formula is 7 sine 2 theta. First step, what do you have to change theta to? T. T. So I'm going to put 7 sine 2t. Now, if I leave it like that, that's the diagonal. That's this. I don't want that. I want just the x part. So what should I multiply that formula by? Cosine of t. Yes. By multiplying it by cosine, you take the diagonal out of it, and you make it just the horizontal. Now I want just the vertical. Okay? If you leave y like that, you're writing this. I don't want that. I want just the vertical. So what do you multiply your formula by to get just the vertical? Sine t. And that's it. That's how you change uh, parametric, uh, polar to parametric. It really just involves a right triangle. Cosine and sine. We're never going to simplify those. No, you, you don't. You just, that's all you do. Yep. Leave it just like that. Now I'm going to graph that and show you what it looks like. Okay, let's, um, let's graph it. Um, I'm already in polar, so let me graph the polar version first. The parametric <coughs> version is the same thing. Well, let's type in 7 sine 2 theta. Okay, I'm going to check my window looks good. Let's hit graph. Uh, not really centered on the screen, but that's okay. But that's what it looks like. Now, the 7 and the 2 each control something in that picture. Does anyone have a guess what the 2 has to do with? If I change, well, let's change the 2 to a, uh, let's change it to a 4, all right, and see what it looks like. <coughs> so what does the, uh, what does that number next to the theta do? Controls the number. Uh, yeah, controls like, if you think of it like petals on a flower or something, it controls the number of petals. Any um, question on that? So you might think you know the pattern. Looks like it's doubled. You put in a 2, you get 4. Put in a 4, we got 8. Try it with an odd number, and you'll see what happens. How about the 7? Anyone have a guess what that controls? Yep, it controls exactly how long the pedals are. Make the 7 like a 4, and you're going to get shorter pedals. In fact, how much shorter? Three units shorter. The length of the pedal <coughs> is that number in front. Now let me graph the same thing, but let me go to parametric. Okay, and I'm going to graph 7 sine 2t. Make sure you close parenthesis, cosine t. Now if you just do that, you're going to get nothing because you haven't put in the other formula. All right, put in the other one. 7 sine 
two t, but we want just the y. That's why we put in sine. And we get exactly the same thing, but I think it draws it slower. And the resolution looks a little different, but it's basically the same picture. Any question on, on that? All right. So, in general, anything of the form a sine 2 theta is going to give you a four-petaled shape. And the length of each petal is the absolute value of the number in front. Because it wouldn't make sense if you put like negative 5 in front. How could a petal be negative 5 units long? It's kind of weird. So whatever the number is in front, the positive version of it, that's how long each petal is. Um, for the number in front of theta, really weird things start happening if you make it a decimal. Okay, the, the pattern basically is if it's even, you get double the number of petals. If it's odd, you get exactly the number. If you put in like 2.4, uh, you start getting like petals that overlap, and sometimes you get like half a petal. It's kind of weird. Any question on those, those kinds of pictures? So I might give you an equation and say how many petals would this have? How long would each petal be? Um, tell me the equation if I wanted to create a flower with, um, I don't know, 12 petals. Put in sine 6 theta, because it would double and you'd get 12. So evens double it, odds get exactly the number. Okay, last graph we'll look at, um, kind of like what we did with parametric, it's a spiral. And the reason it's a spiral is because the radius is the same size as the angle. If the angle is zero, you have no radius. If the angle is 90, your radius is 90. If the angle is 600, your radius is 600. So this just spirals out more and more. So let's graph the um, spiral. And we'll use different intervals. The interval is going to control how many revolutions of the spiral you get. So I'm seeing these numbers, and I'm like, OK, they want mean radians. So I'll, I'll do that. How many revolutions of the spiral would you get with the first one? If you go 0 to 2 pi, just one. Yep. How about if you go 0 to 4 pi? That's two revolutions of the spiral. And how about 0 to 8 pi? That's four revolutions. Now remember, the radius can get as big as your angle can get. So you've got to make sure you set your window big enough. Um, I'm going to set mine big enough to do all of these. Okay? Um, in fact, I'll do them all. I can probably do them all. No, I can't do them all at the same time. So put r equals theta. If you're not getting a theta when you press the button, it's because you didn't go to polar. That's what I had to fix. I wasn't in polar. All right, so clear that out. Put in theta. The biggest the radius will ever get is 8 pi. So I'm going to set my window 8 pi in every direction. Negative 8 pi. 8 pi. Uh, negative 8 pi. And 8 pi. That's way more than I need. Okay. The only place where the spiral is going to get really big is on the right side. The other sides, I don't need as much space. But let's try it. Um, we're 0 to 2 pi. Let's grab it. Okay, so that's not that great of a window for graphing the smallest one, but it works. I really chose that window because of the, um, the biggest one. So you get that. Now let's go 0 to 4 pi. Okay, so you're going to get you two, two revolutions now. There's one, two. Okay, got that. And now the reason I set the window, we're going to get the biggest one, and it's going to go right up to the edge of the screen. Um, let's go all the way to 8 pi. So you get one, there's two, three, and it'll fit four. It'll fit. I've got faith. Okay. 
So it's the same graph. The interval just controls how much of the graph you see. Okay. Any questions on that? Um, is this one? All right. Let me do negative eight pi to zero, just to show you the difference. Um, still going to be a spiral. Still going to have four revolutions. But see if you can tell me the difference. Um, and you kind of have to watch it as it goes. How did all these spirals draw? Outwards. Outward. Right? It started at the origin and it spiraled out. This one is spiraling in. But it not only spiraled in, it's not the same picture. What's the difference? It's like a mirror image. It's kind of like, I don't know if this is going to work, but if I flipped it left, right? Yeah. It's so the same thing. So it's actually a mirror image over the um, y-axis. And it spiraled the other way. It's crazy. Yeah, so all kinds of things you can do. Crazy how nature you So any questions on that? OK, um, so homework tonight. Um, a couple even problems in there. Um, so 19 to 21, um, 24, 30, 31, 33. But then the rest is odds. 37. Actually, I guess I could have just said 37 to 47. Odd. Because yeah, you kind of could. that's what it would really be. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. Um, don't forget, if you are not here, tomorrow's homework is going to be out of a um, package. So if you need to pack it, just um, let me know.